now something is about to happen in this place. Lift up your voice and bless the name of Jesus. He is worthy to be worshipped. He is worthy to be exalted. He is worthy to be honored this morning. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and bless the name of Jesus in this house. Blessed be the name of Jesus. We worship you, Jehovah God. We exalt your name, O God Almighty. We bless your wonderful name this morning. Lord, we see for the glory and honor because of what you are doing, what you are about to do in this place in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, please, I would like you to look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, what are you expecting from God this morning? Yes, can you look at your name and ask them, what are you expecting from God this morning? Believe something good is going to happen in this place. Lord does not gather his people in vain. Also the Bible says that our God will never allow Jacob to seek him in vain. We are not here in vain. There is something God is about to do in the life of each and every one of us who is going to gather and who is gathering on this mountain. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, before, I thank God because our father is in the house. He is my spiritual father. He is our patron. Please, can we clap for Jesus and we clap the servant of God, please. Before I, I, I invite our chairman to come and bring our father on the platform, uh, I feel, I know we are running out of time. But God is with us. I feel in my spirit. Because as we started by saying, there is something unique that is going to happen in this place. Because the grace of God is here. Praise the name of the Lord. How, pe how many people can feel the grace of God in this place? The grace of God is in this place. Praise the name of the Lord. I, I feel in my spirit before I call our bishop, please. Uh, we believe God. We started this journey from January. Praying for this conference very seriously. Believing God that Kiambu County cannot remain the same again. I have not heard an amen from you people. I am saying Kiambu County will never remain the same again. This is an altar that has been laid by God in this place. And I believe the power that is going to be released from this altar, it is going to change the whole of Kiambu County. Men of God, our churches cannot remain the same again. If you believe, say a big hallelujah. Our families cannot remain the same again. Our churches cannot remain the same again. There is a new level where God is catapulting his people. That is where he is taking us. The Bible says those who are born from above. Leverage Kimaru, they are above all. Let me repeat what I have said. Those who are born from above, they are above all. And I believe that is where God is taking his people. There is something that the man of God told us yesterday, Bishop Murevi. This is not our meeting. It is a meeting where we are, you see, it is a meeting of God. Where God is meeting with his people. Amen. Amen. So I'd like us just to go before God five minutes. And we tell God, let your heart, let your heart move in this place, this morning in the name of Jesus. I believe all of us, we need the heart of God. Can we lift up our voices before God? Amen. And we tell God, Father, 
Let your heart move in this place. That is the same heart. This is the same heart that removed the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, from the land of bondage. We want to declare this morning that the mighty heart of God is going to move in this place, delivering the people of God from any kind of bondage. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice in the name of Jesus. Rika Rabo Shana Rabosaya. Riana Rabo Shaka Rabosaya. Riana Rabosaya. Declare this morning. Declare this morning. Declare this morning. That the heart of God is going to locate you. Wherever you are in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray. That the mighty heart of God. We will locate you this morning and your life cannot remain the same again. In the name of Jesus, oh God Almighty, we pray that your mighty heart will locate each and every one of us who is going to gather on this mountain and our life, oh God, Lord, cannot remain the same again. We worship you. We exalt your name. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And everybody say a big hallelujah. Can we clap for Jesus in this place? Amen. Amen. We can have our seat in the presence of God. Let us appreciate these wonderful people, please. Let us appreciate our priest. They are doing a good work. We thank God because of each and every one of us. It's good to be where God wants us to be. I believe this morning God wants us to be here. And as we have said, each and every one of us is going to be located by God wherever we are in the name of Jesus. Thank God because of our bishop. Thank you so much, bishop. For giving us an opportunity to organize this thing. Can we appreciate our bishop please? And because of time. Make us to bring our hand together. We invite our chairman that we love so much. As he come to Amen. Asha, our father. No, no, we can't. Man of God, we cannot appreciate our bishop right now. Thank you so much. Amen. God, God bless you. Let's get seated. Uh, I want to thank God for giving us this opportunity again to come in his presence. I was telling some of us who came a little bit earlier that if we can manage to host this meeting, God has a great plans for us. And uh, we usually say, I think it is a Chinese proverb which says, a journey of thousand miles. It only starts with one step. Praise the Lord. Amen. This was just an idea. Then we, now we can see it being actualized. And we thank God for every one of us for participating. We joined the hands together and now we can see what we are seeing today. So God bless you. So I would want you to get uh, to greet the person next to you and you welcome them in the presence of the Lord. Yes, Lebrecht Kiaro was telling us to 
ask ourselves, what are we expecting? And you are expectation will not be cut off. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, without taking much time, it is always good to go back a little bit. Uh, back to Nasema memory line. Eh? Uh, this Kiabu Pastors Prayer Movement. In fact, we declared it this year as Kiabu Pastors Prayer Movement when we were in a uh, because we started feeling the Lord moving in a special way. And we felt it is not just a fellowship, but it is something dynamic. It is something that is moving. Because we realized wherever we went, we were carrying people with us. Therefore, we, 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 we thought it is not just a fellowship, but it is a dynamic prayer movement that is causing havoc in the devil's territory. Praise the Lord. And we thank God because that is where we are today. Praise the Lord. Amen. So today we are starting our meeting. And uh, before I bring uh, Bishop Thomas to na, speak to us. Na itanarehe Bishop Thomas atuarilie. Bishop Thomas is very special to us in this meeting. Bishop Thomas nwa muanya muno mushama niini yoyo wito. Because I remember we sat down a few of us. Tone guriri kanatuwe ikarade anini ya ituo. And we thought we were not doing very well. Because we realized we could only come together when we have a problem. When someone, one of us probably is sick, or something has happened in, in his family. And we decided we are going to change this story. We don't want pastors fellowship to be uh, those groupings that we have in the village. There are other people who can do that better. But we have an obligation. No, the key. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we came together Na hamwe. and we start, we decided to have a new phase of Kiabu Pastors. Na mwega watu ya Kiabu. And when we sat, Na the, uh, we decided we are going to do something. But just before we did that something, we decided to call Bishop Thomas to come and talk to us. And he is the one who gave us that uh, virgin sermon. We were in a hotel called Ka Sahara West. Sahara West. Sahara. Sahara West. Yes. Yes. And uh, he spoke a word in, in the book of Psalms. How good for brethren to, to dwell together. And he actually spoke prophetically. And from that time we started, we started gathering together. We, we invited uh, Apostle and we had a very major meeting at Kerigiti. 
And then we said our meeting, we shall continue with this meeting. And we, we continue to, we said that now we shall be moving from one sub-county to the other. And God moved us to move to every county before the general, last year's general election. After we completed going loud in the sub-counties of Kiambu, we decided now we shall be meeting every Monday. We then God moved us to another level. Then we started moving to churches, to every one of our churches, the people who comes to our fellowship. Amen. And we started visiting churches. And by so doing, we have been able uh, to encourage one another. But there is one very special thing that happens. After we go around, we patron. to patron. to Praise the Lord. Amen. And I want to say, any time that we go uh, to Bishop uh, Mude, he comes with a very special word for us. And that special word moves us to, uh, to another level. I remember uh, the time that we met in, 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 in his church. And he spoke something about somebody uh, where Jesus sent somebody, uh, I think his disciples. To go and prepare the last supper. And they met somebody with a kabuyu. Praise the Lord. Amen. And he made me carry a kakibuyu. And we went around the church. And all of you followed me. And from that time, the fellowship was no longer the same. The fellowship that followed, we were about 200 people. And from that time, we started moving and the Lord started speaking to us in a very special way. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we thank God because we have a prophet in the house who can speak something and it happens. And that momentum has carried us to, this, to where we are today. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we thank God for Bishop Mude. He is our father in the city. And he has a word for us to this morning. Even as we begin this, our conference. I believe even as he speaks today, he is going to move this the Lord is going to use him to move this conference to the next level. And I want to say this is the plan of God. We actually never planned that you should be the first to speak. But the Lord had to, to, to shift the goal. Our goal. No, guy, no, and, and, and made it that you are the one to start uh, to start this meeting, to open our meeting. Because I believe the Lord has a word for us. Praise the Lord. Amen. I thank God for Bishop Mude 
He's been very instrumental in this fellowship. He may not have known, but he has always encouraged me and uh, when I am sharing this meeting. has always encouraged me when I am sharing this meeting. Because Bishop Mude and Bishop Gashara, Bishop Mude and Bishop Gashara. This is what they do. Anybody who comes to, to Kiambu, they usually tell them, go to Muridi because we cannot do anything before Muridi gives a note. Now, I don't know what to I am very humbled, Bishop, for even trusting me with the leadership of this great man of God. And always I ask myself, do I deserve? But this man of God keep encouraging me. And this far we can say the Lord has been our Ebenezer. So we thank God. So let's put our hearts together as we welcome our bishop to amen, him, amen, uh, amen. To the throne. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Let's keep standing for a moment. I take this opportunity to bless the name of the Lord for each one of you. I really thank God for his grace in the, in the house. There's a lot of grace. I also at the same time want to thank God for Bishop Murithi and his leadership. I have been praying for some time now that God in his own way, because he is God, he will raise this man up. Amen. You all know what has been happening in his church. These are the kind of men that will give hope to full gospel churches. I don't say this lightly. May God put you in a place where you can help your brethren. Yes. Kind of leadership skills, the grace, the anointing that he has, that's what we need. And uh, if we can have this kind of men in place, in our churches or in our denominations, we would not be going to courts. We would not be fighting over property. May God bless you. God bless you. Let's all be seated. I thank God for the privilege of standing before you so that we can kick off this conference. And uh, like I said last Monday, I have a burden for pastors. Big burden. So this, this is the right thing that we want to do today just to give me an opportunity to speak to you as a pastor. On Monday, we said, or oh, the Lord spoke to us and told us, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. How many people prayed that God would give you the right people? Anybody here? Anybody here? How many people were with us on Monday? You are there? This is what we saw. 
The harvest is truly plenteous. But the laborers that are there right now, the people that are doing the work, they want God to commit to them, but they don't want to commit to God. They want the pastors to commit to them, but they don't want to commit to the pastors. They don't want to commit to the leadership. We saw this from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Paul said, the Macedonian churches, although they were being persecuted and they were very poor, the reason why they were able to do an amazing work of ministry was because they first of all gave themselves to God. And then they gave themselves to the apostles according to God's will. There is something I want us to do today. Go with me to the book of Philippians, chapter 3. Paul, in Philippians chapter 3, is actually giving a testimony. And in the testimony, there are two major things that come out from his testimony. Two major things. Number one, in verse 13, he says, I press forward. He wants to press forward. There are some goals he wants to achieve. In verse 20, he says, as I press on, I want to keep the heavenly vision. How many know that's the pastor. Anybody here? Anybody here? You want to press on? There are some goals you have to achieve. You want to keep the heavenly vision. And he tells us in the same book how to do it. In the same chapter. That's what I want us to look at. I'm going to say again. In Philippians chapter 3, Paul is actually giving a testimony. He's talking about himself as a minister to the church of Corinth. I mean to the church of Philippi, sorry. He's talking to them as a minister. And he tells them in verse 13, I want to forget everything that lies behind me. I want to stretch forward. I want to press. If he is going to press, it's because it's not easy. How many know the life of a pastor is not that easy? He, he wants to press. It's not a walk in the park. But at the same time, even as he presses on, he wants to keep the heavenly vision. He wants to keep hearing from heaven. Because he is a citizen of heaven. He is an ambassador here on the earth from heaven. He wants to keep hearing from heaven. Even as he presses on forward. And he gives us to understand how to do that. That's the pastor. That's you. That's me. I'm going to say again, the reason why Paul said this is because he did not have his journey easy. He had bumps on the road, potholes. 
everywhere he went. But boy, did he make it. At the end of his life, he says, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. And I have finished the race. I'm now ready to be crowned in heaven. In other words, he said, I have finished well. That's my prayer for me. That's my prayer for you. That at the end of your journey, you will rise up against all odds and say, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. And I have done exactly what God wanted me to do. And now I'm ready for crowns. Philippians chapter 3 verse 1 going to verse, 13, verse 11. Follow this. Maybe Pastor Muchiri you could get a microphone and help us. It, it will be very very easy even as we Move on. Oh, I love this. Oh, I love this. Tell your neighbor, I press on. Uh uh. Tell your neighbor, I'll press on. Uh uh. Tell your neighbor, I'll press on. Tell your neighbor, I'll keep the heavenly vision. I will finish the race. I will keep the faith. I'll fight the good fight of faith. I will finish well. Can you look at your neighbor and tell them, I will finish well. Ah, look at your neighbor again, tell them, now I am prophesying to myself, I will finish well. Listen, tell me. I will finish well. I may have scars all over. Is anybody hearing me? Paul said, don't play games with me. I bear in my body the scars of the Lord Jesus Christ. But even with those scars all over, having received the several knocks, and being wounded here and there, the thing is, I have finished the race. I have fought the good fight of faith. I have kept the faith. Scars not with the standing. Look at your neighbor and tell them, don't look at my scars. I will finish well. I will finish well. Oh, Rabbi Sakataya. I am prophesying to someone here. You will finish well. I come to prophesy to someone here. Hear the word of the Lord. You will finish well. People may see you as cars. But you will finish well. They may talk about you as cars, but you will finish well. Oh, Rabba Sakataya. Shanda Rabba Kutsa. I declare by the word of God. Hear the word of the Lord. You are not going under. You are not going under. You are not going under. I declare by the word of God. You will finish well. Oh, Riba Sakataya. Shandara Barana Kutsa. Oh, Riba Sikamaya Saka. Oh, yes. We came to a conference. Oh, yes. We came to a conference. But I hear the word of the Lord. I am looking at you as an individual. 
came to address individual pastors. I came to address individual pastors. People who are loved by God and called by God. Oh, Reba Sakataya. I'm speaking to the powers of the air. I'm speaking to the powers of darkness. I'm speaking to the devils of witchcraft. Hear the word of the Lord. These men and women, they will finish well. Oh, Rabba Sakataya. Shandarabara Kutsa. Oh, Reba Sikamaya Saka. I declare by the word of God, from today, from today, there are devils that will point at you from afar. I declare by the word of God, upon every scar, there will be a crown. In your life, upon every scar, there will be a crown. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And right now, in the name of Jesus, for you who is wounded, even before this meeting goes on, for you who is wounded, hear the word of the Lord, receive the oil, receive the wine, right now. On your wounds, on your hearts, receive the oil, receive the wine, in the name of Jesus. Robo Sekataya. Shandarabarana Kutamaya Saka. Oh, Riba Sika Maya Saka. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive the oil. Receive the wine. Right now, upon your wounds, I see a lot of you are too wounded. Receive the oil. Receive the wine. Upon all your wounds right now, the Bible says our God binds up our wounds. Receive. Receive, receive the oil, receive the wine upon those wounds in the name of Jesus. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. I come to declare you will finish well. I come to declare you will finish well. The number of members does not determine how you will finish. I say by the word of God, whether you have 20 members or 100 members or 5,000 members, I declare by the word of God, you will finish well. Shandarabaranakutsa. Oh Jesus. Oh Son of God. Son of God, Son of God, Son of God, Shandarabarana Kutta, Son of God, Son of God, Riba Sakataya, Shandarabarana Kutta, Oh Riba Sikamaya Saka, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Before we begin, receive the oil. Some of you could not be able to preach well on Sunday because of the way you are wounded. Receive the oil. Receive the wine. Shandarabarana Kutsa. Oh, Riba Sikamaya Saka. Shandarabarana Kutamaya Saka. In the name of Jesus. My God. Sit down for a minute. Jesus.
read the scripture, Pastor Machiri. Message or NIV? NIV, please. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 1 to 11. Father, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again. And it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, those evildoers, those mutilators of the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, we who serve God by his spirit, who boast in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. If someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. Verse 7 but whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more? I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. I, I want you to see something in a very, very simple way. Here, Paul, like I told you, is looking at himself as a minister. He is addressing the church of Philippi. And he is telling them, I'm pressing on. There's something I'm reaching for. How many know we are reaching for souls? There are souls we are reaching for. We have goals in our churches. We have plans. We have objectives. But more than anything else, this is what I want you to see. And this is so vital. This is so important. He says... I'm moving on. I'm pressing on. I'm keeping the head of the vision so that I finish well. Tell your neighbor I finish well. So that I finish well. And he is telling them, he is telling them this is what is helping me. And what helped Paul, how many know it will help us? What help to that man will help us today, Bana Chairman? It will help us. Are, are we together? If it helped Paul, how much more us? He is telling them. There was a time I was a minister by name Saul. How many know Saul was a minister before he became Paul? Anybody who knows that? I mean, that man was zealous for God. So much so that anybody that talked about being saved and not being a Pharisee, the easiest way to help that person is to kill him. Before he became Paul, he was Reverend Saul. 
Is anybody here? How, how many know that man was a theologian? Is anybody here? He, he was a professor of theology or divinity, whatever you call it. And he studied at Gamaliel. So this man was Reverend Saul before he became Paul, Apostle Paul. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell it's true. Is anybody here? Is anybody hearing me? Now he comes and says, this was Reverend Saul, a Hebrew of Hebrews, circumcised on the eighth day, pertaining the law, blameless. How many know that's a good resume? Those are good achievements. Yes or no? He comes and says, Oh, I was somebody. Hebrew of Hebrews. When it came to the law, I was blameless. A Pharisee. Of Pharisees. I was a scribe. I was a professor. And I did, when it came to the zeal, I even persecuted the church. I killed them. If you can remember when Stephen was being killed, stoned, how many remember where the jackets were? He's the one who held the jackets. And he said, come on, bring them here. I'll take care of them. Nobody will steal them from here. I want you to do a good job. You can't have jackets on and throw a stone. You need to throw it to hit a target. I'm making it very simple it's for you to understand. But then he comes and says, Oh, I discovered that Saul was Gaining nothing from God. Reverend Saul was a minister of death instead of a minister of life. Instead of helping God in his work, he was destroying God's work. I was gaining nothing. But when Jesus appeared unto me on the road to Damascus, things changed. Are we together? Things changed. And I saw three major things that have helped me in my ministry, and that's why I am who I am. I want to talk about those three things. I became Apostle Paul. What helped Apostle Paul to be able to write two thirds of the New Testament? To open many, many churches in many territories. To raise up leaders. Countless leaders. What helped this man? And now, that's what I want to talk about. Because that is what helped him to keep pressing on. That is what helped him to keep maintaining the heavenly vision and finishing well. How many know that's what we need? Anybody here? Tell your neighbor that's what I need. 
Tell your neighbor, that's what I need. I need to win, you know, thousands of, souls, of people into the kingdom. I need to open up many churches. I need to raise up many leaders. How many know that's what we need as pastors? Yes or no? And that's why we are here. Three things. Number one. He said, everything that Reverend saw hard, I count it as dung because I want to know Christ. Tell your neighbor, know Christ. And I, I want to know him. He is the life. He is the way. He is the truth. He is everything. My friend, he is the increase you want. He is the increase I want. The Bible says, Paul said, we just sold somebody else, winded for the crop, but it is God who gave the increase. He is the increase that we want. We need to know him. He is our help. He saw that his credentials were not helping him. But when he came and started to know Christ and know him better, his ministry continued to improve, to grow on a daily basis. An average minister of the gospel today spends 17 minutes in the presence of God. I'll say that again. Very kindly. Very, very kindly. An average minister of the gospel spends 17 minutes in the presence of of God. 17 minutes. Now, an average believer prays for four minutes a day. Please, can you look at your name? Ask them whether they are married. And ask them if they are married. If you spend 17 minutes with your spouse per day, will you know her? Will you know him? Paul said that I may know him. The Bible says they that know their God will be strong and they'll do exploits. They that know their God will be strong. Where everybody else is going down, they will go up. Where everybody is giving up, they will still remain strong. They will press on. Where everybody else is saying impossible, they will say, with God, nothing is impossible. I'll say that again. Listen to this. These are the kind of people that finish well. People that desire to know him. David said, 
One thing I have asked of the Lord. This is what I will seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all days of my life doing two things. Not preaching. Not preaching. Not even prophesying. I want to do two things only in the house of God. That I may inquire of him. That is to know him. I may inquire of him. I may continually get to get, I mean, get his mind. And that I may behold his beauty. That's worship. Two things. Get his mind and I worship him. That's all. Paul said, I want to know him. Because when I gain him, when I gain Christ, I gain everything. Look at your neighbor. Come on, look at your neighbor. Ask them, are you a minister of the gospel? Very kindly ask them, could you by any chance be in the 17 minute group? We can help you today. The people that finish well, they spend a lot of time knowing him. They spend a lot of time in the book. In the book. Maybe you can remember even the apostles. Peter, John, and the others. The work of the ministry became too big. And too involving. And, the, uh, you know, they, they, they said to the church, guys, come. Come, 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 come. This work is too much. When, it, when it, women start complaining that they are not getting enough of the supplies, then we are in trouble here. We are in trouble. I want you to get seven men full of the Holy Ghost, full of wisdom. They will be in charge of this. But as for us, tell your neighbor, as for us. Tell your neighbor, as for us. We will spend our time in prayer and in the word. What I have come to know is this. Our churches have turned pastors into waiters. You are doing everything in that church. Everything. That's why you only have 17 minutes in the presence of God on an average per day. Look at your neighbor, greet them and tell them something must change. Look at them, tell them, give me that apron. Come on, give me that apron. Give me that apron of a waiter. Come on, give me, give me, give me. Give me. You are a pastor. You are a reverend. You are an apostle. You are a prophet of God. You are not a waiter. Is anybody here? That's why the other day we said we need to pray. That God will bring us men and women that will create space for us to spend time in prayer and the word of God.
but I may know Christ. I want to know his mind. I want to inquire of him. I want to worship him. Those two things. Paul says that I may know him. That I may know him. That's all I want. Because the more I know him, the more I will be able to press on. He is my strength. Look at your neighbor and tell him, do we take that title of a pastor off and put waiter so and so? Listen to this. I learned this from Kenneth Hagin. He said at the beginning of my ministry when it was very, very hard to have things come together. This is what I used to do. Before I go to preach in my church, I would make sure I go to a early morning service in another pastor's church sit down and hear the word. Just be fed. Just be fed. That's Kenneth, Kenneth Higgins. Greet somebody for me and ask him who feeds you. Your church is milking you dry. And I'm saying this very kindly. You can't give what you have not received. Is anybody hearing me? Let's go back. Let's go back. As to for us. We will spend our time in prayer and the word. So that we get his minds. Before we can get the mind of the world. Before we can get the mind of other people. We get the mind of Christ. Remember and greet somebody for me. Remember, before you had people, God called you. He brought the people later. You can choose to go with the people or to stay with the God who called you first. You get his mind first before you go to the people. the one he spoke to, Reverend Kimaro, you are the one he spoke to, Ufuja Kiambu. Are we together? Ni wewe aliongea na wewe. Sasa, kama aliongea na wewe, angalia ukae na ye? You are safe, ukikaa na ye? Mambo ya kuhangaishwa na watu Utaisha Utaisha kama omo Unaiweka kwa maji hata ujui imeenda wapi Tomalisi wana watu May God forbid Lakini pata kaheki makidogo pasta Kaheki makidogo tu Are we together 
kabla hujamali ni wewe uli ni wewe uli kana yule alikuita that i may know him so that i am able to press on and so that i can maintain the heavenly vision i want to know him i want to know his mind i want to know what is he saying what is he saying he is saying about the land what is he saying about that leader what is he saying about the fellowship what is he saying i want to know him and agree to your neighbor and tell them before you got the committee he called you and by the way kule mulikuwa wakati alikuwa anakuita committee haikuweko and i have no problem with the committees did you hear what i'm saying but listen to me there are times it is me and my god it is me the calling i have and god i want to know him is anybody here in this house i want to know him I want to know his mind. I want to know his direction. I want to get his instructions. I want to know him. However long it will take for me to get the instruction from him, I want to do that. Listen to this. man of god by name isaac was living in a foreign land and there was famine in the land he said i am quitting i'm quitting my father told me that we were called here to possess this land and i am here but with this for this famine here I'm quitting. I'm quitting. Listen to this. When he was just about to quit, he went to his prayer closet. And God told him, God told him. Ah, uh-uh, tell your neighbor God told him. You are not going anywhere. In this land, so here. Just so here. there was drought it was not I, i i don't even i don't know what his worker said may i call the members i don't know what they said there is drought in the land there's famine it's too dry there's no rain anywhere pastor what are you saying God told me we saw in the land not another land this one this this one this one this one what does the bible say that year tell your neighbor that year tell your neighbor that year he harvested a hundredfold 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 number 1 know his mind know him get his instructions get close to him be very intimate with god don't go to god for sermons go to god for his mind i'll say that again we we are so busy we only go to god for sermons messages 
We need to go to him for his mind. Now, greet somebody for me. This one, greet somebody. And I ask him, when is the last time God gave you a personal message and told you this one is yours, don't take it to the pulpit? <laughs> Do you remember? Ama ile yote unapewa ni ya pulpit. If all the messages you get are for the pulpit, it means you don't have enough time with God. That's what it means. That I may know him. And number two. He said, I want his righteousness. Let me put it simply. You will never be good enough to yourself. You will never be good enough to other people. But God can make you good enough for himself. I'll say that again. I, I'm putting it in a very simple way. He said. There was. A time I lived for the righteousness of the Lord. So that I can be self-fulfilled that I have done the Lord. But I came to see that I was messing up. Now, I don't want that kind of righteousness. I want the righteousness that comes. Listen to this. Now, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Tell your neighbor you are killing yourself to trying to please everybody. I'm talking to pastors. Are we together? Are we together? You are skinning yourself dry, trying to please everybody. You will never be good enough to everybody. Can I help you? And you will never be good enough even to yourself. Many of us pastors, we spend half a day trying to find a fault with ourselves. I did not preach well on Sunday. I think I misquoted the scripture. My accent is not good. I don't have enough education. I don't have enough money. I wish I had a better sound system. And half a day, you are doing nothing else other than to find fault with yourself. In trying to find fault with yourself, what are you doing? You are showing God that you are not righteous enough to do his work. Look 
look at your neighbor and tell them, with all your weaknesses and your strength, God knew what he was doing when he called you. He knew what he was doing. I'll say that again. When Christ becomes our righteousness, let me tell you what happened. Number one, we feel accepted by God the way we are. On account of the blood of the Lamb. Come on, tell your neighbor I'm accepted. Ah, come on, tell your neighbor I'm accepted. Look at your neighbor and tell it does not matter who has rejected me or despised me or mocked me. That one does not matter. I am accepted. Why? Jesus is my righteousness. I'm accepted. If you think I'm not, Shauriako. Io niako io. Io niako tafadari. I am accepted on the basis of the blood of the Lamb. Period. Oh my God. He is my righteousness. That means. When Jesus died and I am in Christ because I have confessed him as Lord and Savior, watch this. I have the right standing before God. He is my righteousness. I have the right standing before God the way I am. I don't want the righteousness of the Lord. I um, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's what does that mean? I have the right standing with it. I am accepted the way I am. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell him it does not matter what you feel, it does not matter what I feel. I am accepted the way I am as a minister of the gospel, as a child of God. I am accepted. I may have woken up with a bad stomach, but I am telling you in the name of the Lord, I am accepted just the way I am. That's why I have been called into the ministry. Paul said, I want to know his mind and I want to know his righteousness. Watch this. When Jesus becomes my righteousness, I have the right standing with God. And number two, I am being improved on every day. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I am becoming better every day. Tell your neighbor I'm not yet there, but I am going there. I tell your neighbor I'm not yet there, but I'm going there. Ah, tell your neighbor, don't judge me by where I am now. I'm on the journey. I am on the journey. I may still have some mistakes, some weaknesses, some blunders, but hey, listen to this. I am going there. The Holy Ghost is sanctifying me every day. Every day I'm dying to self. And I'm gaining Christ every single day. I'm dying to self and I am gaining Christ. Don't judge me by where I am right now. Don't judge me by the mistakes I've made. Paul said, these are things I want to forget. I am pressing on. I'm not yet there. But one day, I will be there. I 
am not yet the finished product. But one day I will be. Because once I go to see Christ, I will be just like him. So I'll be there. Don't beat yourself with a sledgehammer every single day because you are not yet there. He is your righteousness. Is anybody hearing me? He is your righteousness. He is improving on you. You are growing. You are becoming better every single day. Watch this. The reason why we are wounded so much by gossip, by accusations, listen to this, is because we have not taken Jesus as our righteousness. He is my righteousness. And watch this. Why are you being accused? Because people see you are not there. Are we together? And some people think you are not there. But if you know I'm not there, but I'll be there, you will not be bothered by those gossips. Loud mouth. Accuse us. Is anybody hearing me? Jesus is my righteousness. And that settles it. As long as he is my righteousness, I'm okay. I will press on. And I came to know, like they say many times, the tree that has fruit on it, and I know this from experience, in my own There is a mango tree that has a branch that goes beyond the wall like this. And when the, the, the mangoes are in season, the boys, the girls from the primary school up there, Basarim, that is their root. And they come with the sticks, they come with the stones. Sometimes the stones land way inside the compound. Is anybody hearing me? Is anybody hearing me? Look at your neighbor. Tell them if you are bearing fruit, the kids will throw the stone. at your neighbor. Tell them, if you are not being accused, scandalized, now you know why. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell them, now you know why. There is no hair that comes and some funny girls, and the fruit falls, and they grab hold of it and run. Will you tell your neighbor, as long as you are bearing fruit, you are bound to have Kehe pass by. Unless that fruit is rotten. I come to tell you, get healed and get moving. Get healed, get moving. Jesus is your righteousness. The Bible says, if our conscience does not accuse us, we have 
confidence before God. Is anybody hearing me? We have confidence before God. I tell people, if accusations, mockeries, gossips are like mud thrown on people, you will never know who I am. Because it is thrown from the east, from the west, I mean from everywhere. We together, but I keep moving on and I'm moving on and I'm moving on. Do you know why? Jesus is my righteousness, and if He is my righteousness, I have right standing with God, and I am being improved on every single day. I am not there, but I'll be there. And so loud mouth, I'll keep you talking, and then I'll press on. Is anybody hearing me? Is anybody hearing me? Come on, tell your neighbor, keep pressing on. There are loud mouth to leave behind. Forgetting all that is behind me. They should be behind you. Don't keep them in front. Get behind me, Satan. The problem with you is that you have kept them in front. They should be behind. Uh, is anybody hearing me? Forgetting all those things that lie behind. Those are things. Loud mouth. All I want is his righteousness. I'm good to go. Which thing is this in front? Which should be behind? Inani, will you? Ask your neighbor, Inani, will you? Ata wez kulala. Macho, 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 ku, macho kufunga macho usiku ningumu. Mana hii jamaa iko hapa. Get me behind Satan. Come on. Behind you there. There, there. Forgetting those things that are behind. I press on. Because he is my righteousness. And he is. My strength to move on. He is my rock. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. Listen to me. When he is not your righteousness, you want people to tell you you are right. You want the praise of man. Listen to this. Until you die to the praise of man or insults of man as a minister you are going in circles. You must die to both. Both. Number one, he said, I want to know you. Number two, I want to stand by his righteousness. So that I can be able to press on. 
and move on and move on. Number three, watch this. I'm checking on my time, guys. Number three. The power that crushed death. That's the power of his resurrection. Let me explain to you. Paul says that power that destroyed death when Jesus was in the grave, it destroyed death, got him out, raised him to the highest of the highest, to the right hand of the Father. That power will crush any aspect that wants to kill me, kill my ministry anytime, anywhere. The power that destroyed death. That means anything that I meet on the way as a minister, I will depend on that power of God crushed death, destruction, and I will not be destroyed. If I count on that power that destroyed death, I will not be destroyed. Death will not destroy me, they will be destroyed by that power. Sickness will not destroy me. It will be destroyed by that power. Strive in the church. We will not destroy me. It will not destroy the church. It will be destroyed by that very power that destroyed death and got Jesus out of the grave to the highest of the highest. That's why the Bible says it's not by might, it's not by power, but by the spirit of death. I mean the spirit, the, by the spirit of the living God. And that's why the Bible says that very power that rose Jesus from the dead will quicken your mortal bodies. It will make your bodies alive. Guys, we have power in us. The power that rose Jesus from the dead we need to allow God to move in that power in our lives and nothing by any means will hurt us. There are forces that want to destroy you and your ministry. I declare by the word of God the very power that rose Jesus from the dead, the very power that crushed death, crushes those elements. And it makes you alive again. Life again. Life again. Life again. Listen to this. Life again. May you receive your zeal back for the kingdom of God. May you receive your fire back. May you receive the fire of the Holy Ghost back today in the name of Jesus. May you receive the power to pray in the name of Jesus May you receive the power to win souls in the name of Jesus. May you right now receive the power to make wealth. Power, power, power to make wealth. That, very, that is the very power that rose Jesus from the dead. May it be your portion. May it be stirred up in you in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by the Spirit of the living God.
and that's the very spirit that rose Jesus from the dead. I declare right now, may you be energized today like never before in your life. May you leave this place as bold as a lion in the name of Jesus. May you go to exploits in the name of Jesus. Sakataya Shandara Barara Kutsa Shandara Barara Kutsa O Riba Sika Maya Shandara Barara Kara Robo Sika Maya Saka Shandara Barara Kutsa This is the day that the destroyer is destroyed in your life. This is the day that the destroyer is destroyed in your life by the very spirit that rose Jesus from the dead. This is the day that destroyer of your ministry, the destroyer of your family gets destroyed not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the living God. This is the day. 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 Oh, Rabba Sakamaya. Someone raise up your heart. Come on, start talking to God. This is the day. This is the day. You receive fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. As an individual minister. In the name of Jesus, the destroyer of your ministry gets destroyed today. The very, the very way death was destroyed by the Spirit of God and Jesus rose from the dead. Oh, Rabba Sakamaya Saka. Shandara Barara Kutsa. Riba Sakamaya Saka. Shandara Barara Kara Barara Siri. Rubbles to come on your sucker. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. But you are planning your exit. You are saying this is my last year in this church, in this ministry. I think I can do something else there. I say by the word of God. Today, the destroyer of your ministry gets destroyed. Now, 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 in the name of Jesus, I'm declaring a turnaround in the church. It's not yet time to quit. It's not yet. Not yet. Not yet. say that very kindly, it's not yet. You are planning your exit. It's not yet time. Don't even say there are people you have raised, you have not raised them good enough. It's not yet. This is not the time to quit. This is the time to get energized. In the name of Jesus. Let's lift our hands.
stand before the Father and just respond to that word? A response to God. A response to God this day in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, Lord, over this house. Every pastor, every minister, lift up your voices right now. Begin to cry out to God. Begin to cry out to Him. In the name of Jesus. Karabo, shirarabo, kedabarababo, shirabarabarabo. In the name, in the name, in the name, in the name. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, somebody. It's time for surrender. Time to know him. Time to know him. In his righteousness and his power. In the name of Jesus. Let there be a connection. Let there be a connection right now with God. A connection with God. A connection with his power. A connection with his grace and his presence again now in the name of Jesus. Let there be a connection between you and the heavens, between you and his word, between you and his power, between you and his righteousness. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, be all in the sight of every house and every home. Hallelujah. We make up our minds that God. Bless him. 